Hello everyone and welcome to Sips and Stories. My name is Elizabeth and in today's video I will be discussing some of my favorite American history classics. I recently purchased the amazing Foundations of Freedom set by WordCloud Classics and I loved these books so much that they inspired me to go back and make this video and share with you all of my favorite American history books. Everything from biography to children's classics. So grab your favorite beverage and join me as we discuss these amazing American history books. If you're unfamiliar with WordCloud Classics, they are published by Canterbury Press out of San Diego, California. Canterbury Classics are more of the hardback, leather-bound volumes, and then the WordCloud Classics are more of these leather-bound flexi volumes. The fiction books, I own a couple of them. They're very colorful, very popular with Instagrammers and book collectors like myself, but there's something really special about these nonfiction books. Um, I just love that they are leather, they have more texture to them up close, and of course they have wonderful illustrations and then beautiful quotes and passages on the back of the book. The end papers are also really colorful and interesting as well. So I will go ahead and show you more close up shots of each of these books because they're all beautiful in person. The paper on them is really thick. They have sewn bindings. They are really nice books and I am very impressed with this set. So I'll go over each book with you to show you in more detail. The first is the U.S. Constitution and Other Writings, and I am so excited by this book. It really includes a lot. It packs in a lot. It has both the U.S. Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, the Monroe Doctrine, and then a lot of key writings from some famous Americans and historical figures. So it's really a fun one to go back and peruse, and everyone needs their own edition of the Constitution, especially these days. The next one is very timely and this is the selected works of Alexander Hamilton. Um, Alexander Hamilton is hugely popular thanks to the biography and the musical and I think it was very timely that they included some of his selected works. So we have a lot of letters including one to Aaron Burr and excerpts from the Federalist Papers. Uh, I know Alexander Hamilton was a key supporter of the Federalist Papers. Him and Monroe, I believe, wrote most of it, and it was the foundation of the Constitution. So really interesting. Um, he's not my favorite founding father, I won't lie. Uh, I think his personal life was a disaster, So, but he is interesting to read about nowadays. And it does seem like every place you go, every museum in Washington or in Boston or in Philadelphia, Philadelphia has some new exhibit dedicated to Alexander Hamilton. He's definitely made a historical comeback, that's for sure. The next one I am so thrilled to own and that is Common Sense and the Rights of Man by Thomas Paine. So I think when you love American history like I do, you hear a lot about this book. It's referenced a lot, but to own my very own copy of it is so exciting because it's fun to read something that I know is available at that time during the 1700s, available to all all of the founding fathers probably read this book and that just makes me happy. So I would like to go back and read it. I know it's going to be very old fashioned, but it does sound very interesting and I want to see some of the points that Thomas Paine is making in this book. The next one is a personal favorite of mine and that is the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin. If you have not read this book, I highly recommend it. It's absolutely hilarious. Not only is it a first-hand count of one of the most famous Americans, but it's funnier than heck because let's be honest, Benjamin Franklin is probably everyone's favorite founding father and his biography is so much fun. One thing that I would note about this book is just take it with a grain of salt. It is an autobiography. Benjamin Franklin wasn't the humblest of men and so for that reason I think a lot of this book is just him bragging and I don't think it is 100% historically accurate so just take it in stride. But that being said it is a wonderful account of his life and just all of the contributions that he made to society. It starts off when he is a young apprentice to his brother in Boston then he strikes out on his own and he starts his own printing press in Philadelphia. It's really fascinating because 
because they sent him back to England to learn the trade. And then he ends up starting his own kind of like franchise of printing presses. Very, very interesting. It also talks about a lot of his civic and society contributions, such as the post office and the fire department and the hospital. So every time I read this book, I just want to be a better citizen. I just want to join a group and contribute to my community. It really gives you that sense of contribution. And he, his life was amazing. All the things that he accomplished in one lifetime, even if he was bragging, is amazing. This book was written later in life and he does mostly talk about his earlier life in Philadelphia, which personally I find fascinating, but he doesn't talk a lot about the American Revolution. So if you wanna read this and learn about the American Revolution, he doesn't get into it too much, but I personally find his earlier life more interesting and I love this book. I also like to think of this book as one of the first self-help books that was ever available. He spends a lot of time talking about his daily habits, his his goals, his virtues, and if you Google Ben Franklin's daily schedule, it's really fascinating in and of itself just to see how he organized his day and all the virtues that he tried to follow. And like most of us, I don't think he followed them successfully. But I love this book and it is just a fantastic read. The next book in this collection is actually one of my personal favorites, and that is the narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass and some of his other works like My Bondage and My Freedom. So I was so excited that this set had this, and to be honest, this is the reason I bought the set. This is the best edition of the narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass that I have personally ever seen, and it is the reason enough to buy the entire set. I read this for the first time this year and it was such an amazing read. It was so powerful and awe-inspiring. I personally think that Frederick Douglass is one of my favorite founding fathers. I think he should be on the $20 bill. I think there should be statues of him throughout America because he really did contribute to our freedom. And this is by far one of the best firsthand accounts of what it was like to be a slave. And Frederick Douglass did enjoy a lot of personal freedoms too because his father was the master and in a lot of respects that made his life harder and in a lot of respects it made his life easier. And when he talks about just learning how to read, it's so poignant. If you love books like I do, you just kind of get teary eyed when he talks about learning how to read because Yes, learning how to read can literally save your life, as it did Frederick Douglass's. And one of the things I really enjoyed the most about this book was how well of a speaker and a writer Frederick Douglass is. I wasn't expecting this book to be as eloquent and beautiful as it is. It's just really, really poignant. And I think one of my favorite scenes is when he's talking about why slaves sing. It's just so heartbreaking when he explains why they sing. And it kind of makes me think that maybe our modern blues is based off of some of those old slave spirituals. It's really, really interesting. So fantastic book and everyone needs to read this, not just Americans. Anyone that is interested in freedom and justice needs to read this book. The last book in this collection is quite interesting and that is some of the famous presidential inaugural addresses. So it includes most of the presidents. I looked through it briefly and it's everyone from George Washington to Barack Obama. So a really nice one to have in your collection. And it's not something I'm gonna read cover to cover, but it might be fun to go back and read some of those famous presidential speeches like Abraham Lincoln or Roosevelt. So I'm really happy that they rounded off this collection with this one. So there you have it, everyone. That is my overview of the Canterbury Classics Foundations of Freedom set. It's a wonderful set. I highly recommend it if you are a history lover like I am and a book collector. One negative of the set that I just thought was worth mentioning is that it is printed and bound in China. And that's something that always bothers me as a book collector anyway, but to literally see the US Constitution printed in China Whew. Uh, I mean, that could spark a debate in and of itself. So for all you purists out there, I thought I would mention that because that is important to a lot of people. But I do have my own copy of the Declaration and the Constitution, the pocket sized edition, which is printed in the United States. So I like to have the pocket edition on me at all times because you never know when you're going to need the old Constitution. In this next half of the video, I thought I would discuss some of my other favorite American history classics, one that you cannot miss. And one of the first ones is John Adams by David McCullough. 
I've mentioned this book on this channel once or twice, but it really is my favorite biography of all time, one of my favorite nonfiction books, and one of my favorite books of all time, really. It's such a fascinating read, and it's such an interesting read. So if you're a person that thinks that biography is dry and it's boring, you need to read this book. It is so fun, so exciting. John Adams and Abigail Adams are such amazing characters. They jump off the page, so much so that HBO was inspired to make a miniseries based on this book. And as someone that has watched the miniseries and read the book, I have to tell you the book is 100% better. So please go back and read the book because it's absolutely fascinating. It talks a lot about John Adams' life, everything from his younger days as a lawyer in Boston, to the Boston Massacre, he was really involved in that with the trial, to going off to Europe to secure funding for the American Revolution, to being a part of the Continental Congress. What is more fascinating is the account of Abigail Adams. If you're someone that is a feminist like me and wants to learn more about Abigail, I highly recommend this book because there are letters and diary entries written in Abigail's own hand and her own words, and they just jump off the page. She was such an amazing person, and you really feel that half of John Adams' success was Abigail. You know that he went to her for advice, and I think if she had lived in today's world, she would have been a politician herself. She's such an amazing person because as John Adams was off doing all of these things and traveling, she was at home in Boston during the revolution trying to take care of her kids, trying to take care of their farm, Braintree. It's such a wonderful book. One of my favorite scenes in this book that just tells you how fun it is, is when John Adams is on a ship and they are attacked by a British ship. And the captain and the crew, they tell John Adams, they say, look, we're about to be attacked. We've got this. Why don't you go below and save yourself? And John Adams is like, no way. He whips out his musket. He gets involved with the battle on the ship. That just explains what kind of person he was. So I love this book so, so much. Another classic by David McCullough is 1776, and I recommend this one if you're like me and you've forgotten a lot of your U.S. history class in eighth grade and you just can't remember all the details of the key battles and some of the key events because this covers everything from the Boston Tea Party to the Declaration to some of the famous battles leading up to that famous crossing of the Delaware with George Washington. Um, I really enjoy this book a lot because not only does it give you a first-hand account of George Washington. So if you want to learn more about Washington and his role as the general in the army, this is a really nice one to read. It also has a lot of descriptions of some key battles both in Boston and in New York. And the thing I loved about this book is that George Washington made a lot of terrible mistakes. So I did not realize that until I read this how bad of a leader George Washington was sometimes. But his gift was he just kept going. And I think that's a lesson for all of us that when you are a failure, just continue with the goal and eventually you'll get to where you need to be. And I think that's why they elected him our first president because he just would not give up on the goal. And that famous crossing of the Delaware and the surprise attack on the British at Christmas time, I was on the edge of my seat. So even though you know what happens, it still makes for a very exciting read. And moving on to kids' books, the first one I would like to recommend, of course, is Johnny Tremaine by Esther Forbes. And I really wanted to highlight this edition, which is illustrated and has some comic book illustrations by Nathan Hale. I love when publishers reintroduce a classic with new illustrations in order to get kids to buy into it. And this is such a perfect example of that. Nathan Hale does this introduction that in comic book format. So I will just show you briefly some of his comic book illustrations. And it's so much fun to get kids to start reading this very classic book about the American Revolution. So just to give you an example, here's my old boring edition of Johnny Tremaine. And here is the new fun comic book introduction version. And I recently reread this this week in order to make this video, and I loved it. I think when I was a kid, I thought Johnny Tremaine was very boring, but this is really a fun one to read, both for kids 
and adult and it is 75 years old or over 75 years old and i believe she wrote it shortly after pearl harbor so that alone is very fascinating and it has been on reading lists in the public school curriculum for years and literally generations it's a fascinating story about johnny tremaine who starts off as a silversmith apprentice and then he famously burns his hand and he no longer has a trade so he teams up with the boston observer and he runs errands and he basically just helps out with the Sons of Liberty and gives them secret messages and goes on secret missions um, before the American Revolution breaks out in Boston and in Lexington. So a really fun book and it's also a really great coming of age story. There's a little romance in it as well. Just a fun book and I highly recommend Johnny Tremaine. Another one that I wanted to highlight in this video since I love Frederick Douglass so much is The Life of Frederick Douglass, the graphic novel. This is one of the best graphic novels I've ever seen. I recently picked it up at my public library and it is so amazing. Because Frederick Douglass's words are so poignant and heart-wrenching, to see those words transformed into these illustrations is amazing. And as you can imagine, a lot of the illustrations are really difficult. They show whippings and brutality, but I really do think this is a really good one for kids and teens, especially teens. It does go back and it gives you a lot of supplemental material about Frederick Douglass, but it just shows the poignancy of his life as a slave through illustrations. So I love this one so much. So that is The Life of Frederick Douglass by David Walker, Damon Smith, and Marissa Louise. And the library is not getting it back anytime soon. And finally, a classic for kids is Ben and Me by Robert Lawson. And so this is An Astonishing Life of Benjamin Franklin by his good mouse, Amos. So it basically tells the story of Benjamin Franklin from his pet mouse, Amos. And we all know now who really invented all of his famous inventions. It wasn't Ben. It was the mouse, Amos. I love this one. Disney has famously turned this into a cartoon. So this is a really fun one to read with kids and then go back and watch that cartoon. And I also loved learning that this was by Robert Lawson. So I found it in my pile of books, hence the very old copy of it. And I was so excited that it was by Robert Lawson because I recently read Rabbit Hill this year by Robert Lawson and I loved it. And he really does have some beautiful illustrations. So I highly recommend these books just for the illustrations, but the story of Ben and Amos is a lot of fun as well. Love, Ben and Me. And last but not least is a book that I just decided to tack on as a bonus, and that is Abe's Honest Words, The Life of Abraham Lincoln by Doreen Rappaport and illustrated by Kadir Nelson. And I didn't even know this book existed until about a week ago when I saw it at a used bookstore. And are you kidding me? Look at the cover of that book. Look at the illustrations. Isn't it beautiful? I'm one of those people that loves picture books and sometimes I want to take out the pictures and like literally rip them out and hang them up on my wall. This is definitely one of those books you're going to want to do that with because Kadir Nelson's illustrations are so beautiful. And he's illustrated a lot of other books too. Just a lot of historical picture books. So now I want to go back and just collect every book that he's ever illustrated. So I'll just go ahead and show you some of these illustrations because they're so poignant. They're so beautiful. And I mean, look at that. Look how stunning that artwork is. I mean, even if a child doesn't know how to read yet, you can feel the emotion in his illustrations. Look at this one of Abe reading. I love it. And oh my goodness. This is my favorite, the cotton fields. Oh my goodness, his illustrations are fabulous. Yes, there are so many beautiful picture books about American history, but I am so excited to have discovered this book and all of the wonderful illustrations by Kadir Nelson. I wanna go back and collect them all. Thank you for joining me for my American History Classics Overview. I just have to go back and say once again that I do love that Word Cloud Classics set, The Foundations of Freedom. I'll link it below. It's a wonderful set for history buffs like me. I also highly encourage you to pick up some of these children's books and biographies as well. They're all terrific reads. So thank you everyone and have a terrific 4th of July.